participants for the sixth annual London Chess Classic. Great field, great field. Fabiano Caruana, Italian American, rated over 2,800 on a tear this year. Vishinan from India, former world champion, just finished a challenging Magnus Carlsen for the world championship. My buddy from the United States, Carl Nakamura, who won it last year. Great player. And Vladimir Kramnik, guy's a monster. Absolute monster, and I mean that in a good way. Former world champion from Russia. Anish Giri, living in the Netherlands. Another great upcoming player. This year he's been on a heck of a tear. And also a guy I like a lot, Mickey Adams. He's a great player. Been around for years. And uh, Mickey and my birthday are close together. His is the 17th of November. Mine's the 16th. So happy belated birthday to you, Mickey. But anyway, that's the lineup. Great lineup for the 6th Annual London Chess Classic. Don't miss any of the games. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Round 2 of the 6th Annual London Chess Classic 2014. Great tournament. It's a 6 player, 5 round tournament. It uses the football scoring system with, I believe it's 4 points for a win, 1 point for a draw, and 0 points for a loss. So, and it's only 5 rounds, so it's anybody's game. This year, Magnus Carlsen isn't playing in it, but you'll see in my introduction beginning of the video, you saw the players that are in it. It's a hell of a game. White, former world champion of Vladimir Kramnik, just a monster. And I mean that in a good way. Against my buddy from the United States, Akaro Nakamura is black. This is a hell of a game. It's, it's really something. And, of course, it's a King's Indian, so it's going to be wild. I do want to mention, though, at the end of the video, the winner of the game has a postmortem. Talks about the game. I'm not going to say who it is. So let's get right to it. D4, Knight F6, C4. Typical King's Indian stuff. Let's go through it. D6, that, that tells it's a King's Indian. Bishop B2, Castles. At this point, I want to mention, I want to give a shout-out to the charity that's running this tournament. This is their major fundraiser. It's Yes to Chess in England, in the UK. It's a great charity. I wish we had nationwide, pretty much nationwide in England, here in the United States. I wish we did. We do have it in some cities. There's chess and schools in New York and around. But anyway, those of you that want to donate to the Yes to Chess, even if you're not in, in the UK, in the United States, you're more than happy to donate. I'm sure they'll, they'll love the contribution. Two ways to do it. Go to the LondonChessClassic.com, LondonChessClassic.com, and you'll see a donation button that will lead you through the prompts. And also it's Yes2Chess.org. That's Yes, the number two, Chess.org. We'll also give you information on how to donate. And believe me, they do all, all their fundraising at this event, and it's a great thing. Gary Kasparov was here today uh, doing a simul and all kinds of great stuff's going on behind the scenes, behind the tournament. Anyway, back to the game. And I will leave those web addresses in the description of the video. Knight F3, E5, D5, of course. A5, Bishop G5. That's a really annoying pin on this knight here. Right now, it's about an even game on the computer. We're on move eight. Typical King's Indian. Uh, hell, hell hasn't broken loose on the king side yet, but it always does. H6, bishop comes back. And knight to g4. That's a double reason for that. It hits the dark squared bishop, which is quote unquote white's good bishop. And it also makes room for this pawn to advance. Bishop d2. And there we go with f5. H3, knight to f6, pawn takes. Now, the computer shows g take is the correct g takes is the correct move. I think all of us play bishop takes, and that's a close second. I think for a lot of reasons. One, the g pawn still in front of the king. Of course, computers don't have emotions. It's just pure calculation. I think I think a lot of us though would play bishop takes f5. I know I would, but I think the correct move is what Carl did: g takes. Queen to c1. Good move there. You want this queen bishop battery bearing down on the black's king side. 
He has to go to f4 to black that. And you see those two important squares. Not only does it black that bishop and queen tandem, but squares e3 and g3 are being controlled by black now. g3 by Kramnik. And a curl goes e4. It's forced to move the knight. Computer thought knight to d4 might be worth looking at. Then after knight to h7, knight e6, bishop takes, pawn takes, e3, pawn takes, pawn takes. Interesting to be sure. That's crazy. After knight to h4, e3, pawn takes, pawn takes the other way, knight to g6. Now that knight's in a really good spot. The only thing I chase this off is this knight or this bishop. And, of course, you can see it's right on the 6th rank, right on Black's king. But what's he going to do here? This is a tough call. Computer likes g2. Move the pawn to g2. About a third of a pawn down in score. There's rook to f7. That's what Akaro did. After rook to f7, queen c2. Now, I think there was a chance before for Akaro to... G2 might have been a little better, but what, I, what I'm worried about is after queen to c2 is like this, the bishop cannot come here anymore. And that's a problem, because this knight is a big pain in the neck. Just covering this square, this square, and this square. And nothing can really move it besides the bishop or the other knight. Now, for the other knight on f6 to get to it, or you can go knight here to knight here, well, that's a lot of time. So Carl moves that knight there. Now the computer likes knight to a6, queen to d7. It's difficult blocking in that bishop, but I think it was worth exploring queen to d7. Knight, white finally castles. Around move 19. Now look at this. Move 19, white castles long. Black's got a pawn on g3. White has a pawn on, excuse me, white has a knight on g6. I mean, this is typical Queen's Indian. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It shows this is a question mark move for Carl. Now, it is the third move on the computer. It's only about a half a point difference between knight to c5, which the computer liked, and knight to e5, which Carl did. That's a very, very natural human move. He's probably hoping. Take. Queen takes. Maybe queen comes here. Oops, sorry about that. Maybe queen comes here. Hoping to get the attack stymied down. So after knight to e5, rook over. Carl takes, Kramnik takes. Now, score's gone up a little bit for White. It's about a, almost a point and a half advantage now for White. What to do, what to do. And I don't, this is, I'll, I'll start making this point here. We're on move 21, and Carl was starting to run low on time, believe it or not, with 20 moves to go to the time control. There's a 30 second increment, granted, but it's a fairly, it's a very complex. And I won't say who it was that was at the end here in the post-mortem. The individual talked about still pretty close to their preparation. Bishop takes. I think that might have been small inaccuracy. Queen of g5. Well, I think it's a lot more natural move, to tell you the truth. It gets the queen of the defense a little bit. Queen of g5. Knight to f4. You know, things like that for white. And it starts getting a little bit more, less, I should say less crazy. But after rook to f1, bishop takes. He had played queen, knight to f4, knight to a6. And I think it still sucks for black. I think he might have survived that. After bishop takes, rook to g1. Rook takes, or excuse me, queen to f6. That was a move that the computer didn't like at all. It liked queen to g5 and liked g2. Queen to f6 was the last choice. And I think Carl, 
he's struggling with the position and he's running out of time. And Carl is a very good blitz player. In fact, he's the best bullet player in the world. Rook takes. And Carl has another question mark move. Now, very rarely will you see this, but the fact of the matter is, it's one of the top two moves for black. Queen F2 was the computer's choice. Nakara went knight takes g6, and the points are starting to pile up. It's almost a three-point advantage now for Kramnik. After rook to f2, rook takes, queen, bishop d1, queen, queen, knight. Yeah, like I said, it still sucks for black, but it's a lot easier to manage. After knight takes, rook takes, queen f7, Rook g3, bishop f5. Looks great, but after e4, actually, the computer liked queen to b3 instead. Then after b6, knight b5, knight d7, knight takes, knight c5, with almost a four point advantage for white. After e4, I mean, poor Nakamura. I mean, I, I remember watching this game on live stream. I think you can still get it on either chess24.com, which is a very, very good site. If you can join that, boy, I'll tell you. Uh, chess24.com. You can join for free and check it out. Anyway, you could just tell he was just suffering and suffering. And those of us that play, whether we're lower-rated players like us or world-class players, suffering is still suffering. And he's been suffering for a while. And for Nakamura to take this much time, which is very unusual for him, you know he's getting pressed into the ground. It's a horrible, horrible feeling for a player when you are basically have no counterplay and you're constantly being pressured. It's a horrible feeling emotionally. Bishop g6. Bishop g4. King to h8 is the best move for the computer. Queen to f1 check, another question mark from the computer. I don't think it deserved one. After king to h8, knight to d1, bishop e5. It's not that great for black, but I don't think it's hopeless. Knight to d1, which he was going to do anyway, I think. Bishop e5, bishop h3, queen's got to back off. Rook to g1. And it's just tough. King to h7. It's hard. I mean, he's playing. I mean, look at her. We've got a, a rook and a knight for a Carl. He's almost. We might as well say he's down a rook and a knight. They haven't been played in the game, and we're on move 30, and none of them have moved yet. None of them are close to a place where they can help. The knight's going to jump to d7, but it's going to have to bounce around before he can help any. And therein lies the problem. He's almost he's down two pieces the whole game. Bishop f5, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight to d7. Finally, the knight gets out. But I think it's too little too late. It's almost a three and a half point advantage for black, or excuse me, white. Rook g6, just turning the screws. Queen f7. Rook takes check. There goes the last tiny bit of protection Black's king had. Worth looking at might have been bishop takes. Then after rook, rook e6, knight f6. That would have been a lot better for Black than what happened. After rook takes, king g8. Rook checks again, king f8. Now we're on move 35. And I think a Carl is down to maybe three minutes. Stop the video for the next few moves in here and, and really look at it and try to analyze it the best you can. This is a lot more complicated than it looks. And a Carl really tries to get some counterplay. He's very creative, but it's just, just not enough. Knight to F2. The B5 is trying to open it up. Get his other rook into play. He can't get the king out. He can't move the king to get the rook into play, so he's going to try to get the rook on the other side. So kudos to a Carl. Knight Pawn takes, queen takes, queen takes.
And now here's a move that's... Stop the video now and see if you can find it. Very, very outstanding move. Rook the G8 shock. King can't take. This knight here checks. And now it's almost hopeless. King e7, bishop g5. I mean, it's a 15-point advantage at this point. Bishop f6, and Carl's just holding on. That was move 40, by the way. Queen e2 check, and that's it. Carl said to hell with it. And Carl Nakamura resigns. To give you an idea, after knight to e5, bishop takes, king, bishop takes, rook takes, Knight checks, king takes the queen, king takes. I mean, it's just a disaster. So anyway, tough break for my buddy Carl. Well done by Vladimir Kramnik. That was a hell of a game. And I feel bad for Carl. He was suffering the whole time. That's okay. That's the way it goes. Carl drew the first round. This is round two. So that's the game from round two, and a hell of a game it was from the 6th Annual London Chess Classic 2014. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I want you all to look in the description for the websites to donate to Yes to Chess, the charity in England, in the UK, that teaches chess all over the UK to school children. Great, great charity. Uh, please donate. Anyway, folks, as I always say, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Okay, this bishop g5, bishop p3 is very rare idea, but in fact very dangerous. I mean, especially for one game, over the board very difficult to play for black. Because if, okay, knight g4 is forced, otherwise white will play knight d2 and get better position. Bishop d2, f5, and this is all forced. It looks very good for black, but in fact, okay, I analyzed it. Some time ago already, and I had it in my pocket, you know, for Kim's Indian, but just for quite some time. Is it it's in your pocket? Have you got anything else in that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, some other ideas. Possibly but... something against the groom, Phil. No, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Do you know, it's probably been some time since you... Well, when was the last time you faced a, a King's Indian at this level, actually? At this level, for quite a long time, yeah. already, I haven't faced. I mean, I, I had this. In the good old days, you used to I had this Gary prepared all the already, time. maybe like a year ago or something. But uh, yeah, I somehow didn't have a chance to play it yeah. so far. Yes, no, I won lots of games in King's Indian. I have to say, about, without false modesty. <laughs> <I won laughs> no, no, lot we of know. Games. Well, I mean, Gary uh, basically gave it up because you kept yes, beating sort him. Of, yeah, but in <laughs> different line. But this line is, I thought it's a very good try for one game. And it's, okay, f4, the problem is if h5, then knight g5 is, a, is coming and then followed by g4. White has a dangerous attack. And if king h7, then immediately g4. And it's very important that the king is on h7. I mean, then g5 is threatening. Okay, the position is awfully sharp, but of course, being having advantage of playing it, you know, with a lot of preparation against the player who has over the board, I thought, I thought actually if I get it, I have good chance of winning a game against any player. So mm -hmm. I was, well, I'm lucky to get it in this game, yeah. yeah. G3, okay, e4 has to be played. Now knight d4 was not so good, so knight h4. F3 is just bad here. Because simply bishop d1 and then bishop c2 all pawns are collapsing. So e3, yeah, this is kind of forced position. Okay, here black has a lot of options. It's a very, very sharp and complicated position. Even computers are uh, kind of not really sure what is going on here. It's such a complex position. Rook f7 is one of the options. Queen c2. Yeah, knight fd7 is a mistake. I mean, a mistake yeah, yeah. Uh, knight a6 is only reasonable move here. And then, okay, then it goes very sharp position, still continues. But after knight fd7, I just, I didn't remember what computer was saying. I just remember that he was saying that white is much better already. But mm. here I started to play over the board. I went, uh, I don't know, again, rook g1, knight f4, many interesting moves, long castle. Now I see knight c5 should have, should have been played. That is what Hikaru also told me after the game. But somehow I think it looks pretty pretty bad anyway. So my plan was to play rook hf1. And then probably black has to do this. Takes, takes. Bishop takes h3. Uh, let's say rook g1 probably. And queen g5. Uh, 
well, yeah, let's say knight f4. I thought I thought it was just over, but Hikaru said that he he was planning bishop f5 here, and after e4 maybe there is bishop takes e3. To start, yeah, I mean I don't know if it's not losing. I mean it looks like just gone because White has terrible attack, but maybe he is still not losing immediately here. Although I still don't believe in, in Black's position. I mean idea is Queen c3, knight e4, maybe holding. I'm not even sure that after EF, Black will manage to defend against just direct attack, followed by Queen e3 and Rook takes g3. Uh, it looks looks really like it can simply be made, you know, and Rook g3 and okay, White has very uh, maybe some other options. But anyway, Knight c5 had to be played, I think, because after Knight e5. Yeah, here I was just simply was trying to understand. I mean, uh, since this position, since this move, I, I had just a choice of what is, I mean, of, you know, many good moves and which one is better, is simpler. Because here still knight f4 is also good, but I thought rook f1 was very direct. And okay, I'm just starting direct attack and you see black pieces are all undeveloped. So I don't know what, what to do here. I mean, bishop h3 is losing by force practically. Knight takes e5. Because now after bishop f1 there is knight f7, so rook f1, bishop f1. Okay, takes, takes, and just mate. Simply bishop f5, queen g6, and just mate in attack. Uh, so I don't even know, I was considering maybe queen e8 move, maybe to try, but then even knight f4 is good because I'm threatening bishop h5, and then simply I want to pick up the pawn, rook g1, rook takes g3. I think it's pretty bad already. After rook f1, rook f1, bishop h3, rook g1. Okay, I was expecting queen g5 somehow. Still, it's awfully bad, probably after knight f4. And uh, I don't remember what was, maybe I thought maybe he could try it, something like that. But then I even thought maybe queen d1 is even more clear cut. e4 is also powerful, I mean, like this, and I don't know, it's it's awful position, I mean, of course. Uh, but queen f6, and now again, I think knight f4 was also winning, actually. So I was not sure, I mean, knight f4 is very strong also. I thought maybe he, he should try to defend like this. And yeah, now queen d1 I thought even better because if four bishop g6, maybe somehow black is still holding. But after queen d1, I doubt. Okay, I was checking knight h5 is a threat. I thought bishop g6, rook takes g3, and black has a very nice uh, position like this here. Like knight f8, bishop h5, <laughs> king h7, or something like this. You know? Just trying to hold. <laughs> To hold it, but okay, I, I think I'm not winning uh, on the spot maybe yet. But finally, rook g3, I calculated it's just over because bishop f5, queen f5, of course, that mm -hmm. is the yep. point. Uh, so after which knight g6 is only move. Uh, how to go to the. Okay, rook g6. Yes, queen f7. Okay, now bishop f5, unfortunately for black, <coughs> unfortunately for me, doesn't work because takes, takes, rook e6. And after bishop f5, I have check and very important check from h5. And h5 yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is very important. Otherwise, it could be more or less okay. But check, bishop g6 takes takes knight b5, and I'm cashing everything here. Yeah. We actually found that variation down. I forgot. We, we, we checked out the h pawn running down the board, and it's okay. You could stop it. Yeah, I, I wasn't <laughs> sure. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you can I, I didn't. I didn't go so far. <laughs> somehow I was not too afraid. It's of all right. H -pawn. It's all. It's all in the detail. Yeah. yeah. You, we have to check, we have to check this, and you can sleep easy tonight. So yeah. No. There's then some other options like queen f2. I, I have knight e4 or knight d1, and queen e2, rook g7. King g7, bishop c3 check, and queen takes c2. Then another option is queen e5, which I thought was losing on the spot because of, uh, let me remember, because of what? Because I thought actually many moves, but I thought maybe this is the most clear cut. Knight b5, bishop f5 only move, and rook g7. King takes g7 only move, and bishop d3. Very simple, chess. And I think it's gone. Takes, takes. And bishop c3 is a threat, mm -hmm. queen e7, bishop c3 check, and I think I'm just mm -hmm. mating, king f8, <coughs> and somehow queen f5 check, I think I just mate, yeah. so queen c8 check, and c7 is falling, I mean, just over. So queen f7 only moves now, I don't know, I, I was tempted to play knight b5, which looks also very powerful. Bishop f5, rook takes g7 check, king takes g7, e4. But somehow after bishop g6, queen c3 check, king g8, I couldn't find any force win. I mean, bishop a6, knight a6, somehow black is still 
<coughs> it was Bishop G4, Queen F1 check. I don't know. Probably it's winning, but I thought Rook G3 is easier. It's absolutely only move Bishop F5. Now Queen B3 probably wins as well uh, with the idea after B6, Knight B5. Now I was calculating some line. Bishop C3 is threatening. Knight D7. I think I can just take on C7. And after Knight C5, Queen B6. Knight D3 check is not enough, I thought, because I take, <coughs> take, and now I have some very strong move. Let me, Queen B3, I thought, yeah, Queen B3 was, uh, Queen F1 check, Queen D1, ah, yeah, Queen F1 check, Queen D1, and, 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 uh, Queen C7, Queen D3, Rook C8, uh, Queen D3, so check, Queen D1, Rook C8, Knight E6, Bishop, Rook C, Rook takes E4 check, Bishop C3, so this was, also okay, so basically over. everything is winning. I think, yeah, but <laughs> if, uh, yeah, that's what I saw. I mean, th but sometimes it's a problem when everything wins, you know, you can just, okay, you, I mean, there's so many ways. You so, can bishop, switch off. so after bishop g6, yeah, I mean, you can choose the wrong one. But I think, uh, yeah, I calculated till the end with bishop g4 move because it's now very forced. Bishop e6 is a threat, okay, check. Knight d1, bishop e5 only move. Well, very nice variations, like if he goes something like this, I check him. Bishop f7, bishop takes h6, and after king h7, rook g6, yeah. that is a problem. King takes g6, e5, e5. check, king h5 on this square, and I thought queen, queen e4, e4 should, <laughs> should manage somehow. I didn't calculate lay further, but I thought... No, we did. We, 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 we did. did. Yeah, we did that one. Right. We, we got this one. Yeah, and after bishop e5, okay, then I saw many ways different, but then I saw this most clear cut is bishop h3, he has to go to f6. And, bishop, and rook g1, very simple, and all of a sudden no, no, no defense. Bishop f5 is a threat, and after king h7, bishop f5 is just collapsing. I mean, rook g6 and everything is coming. So yeah. then the rest is already sure. easy. Yeah. You know, I get a lot of players asking me, why don't we see more King's Indian defenses at the highest level? Mm, well, I, I am asking also, I mean, my opponents, why does, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, have, you raise a good question, actually. But, <laughs> but I think we've got you, you know, you know that. But I think Petrosian already answered it once, yeah? Because uh, he like he won uh, lots of games yeah. in Kings Indian, especially in this variation, yeah. actually. Which is called after him, this D5 mm. is Petrosian yeah. variation. Yeah. And, and he said that, uh, well, you know, I'm so happy when uh, when my players play play this yes. opening because Kings Indian feeds my family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but uh, no, of course it is a sharp opening, but uh, it is not easy to play this opening. Yeah. I mean, I, I I wouldn't go far to say it's a bad opening, but uh, you're not like Korchnoi, who is uh, Korchnoi also. I mean, he basically thinks the Kings Indian is unsound. This is. It, this I is think his. objectively it's unsound, but okay, tricks in Kings.